Gauravani Pracharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschacha de Shatarine Vancha Kaupa Terubyascha Kripa Sindhu Bayevacha Patita Nam Pavane Bio Vaishnavibio Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the nectar of devotion and this is lesson number this is lesson number 11 Oh, there's a six Goswamis. You can see how the Babaji dress is. Oh, very pure souls. Radha Kundata Teka Linditanaya Terecha Vamsivate Preman Mada Vasad Ashesha Dasaya Grasto Pramato Sada Gayanto Chakada Harer Gunavaram Bhava Vibhuto Muda Bande Rupa Sanatano Ragujago Sri Jiva Gopalago. So we offer our obeisances to the six Goswamis who were sometimes on the bank of the Radhakund Lake or the shores of the Yamuna and sometimes at Vamsivat. There they appeared just like madmen in the full ecstasy of love for Krishna, exhibiting different transcendental symptoms in their bodies. And they were merged in the ecstasy of Krishna consciousness. So, with a, a brief review of the previous lesson. We spoke about Raganuga Bhakti. Right? Raganuga Bhakti means following the path of devotion with Raga. Raga meaning intense attachment and absorption. And we spoke about what should be our attitude to Iskon Siddha Pranali. And we said Siddha Pranali is not accepted by the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, and we don't encourage any Iskon devotees to go into Siddha Pranali. It's not the process for realizing your spiritual identity. You want to know your spiritual identity, Krishna will reveal it in course of time. It's not that you go to a guru and pay some money and he'll tell you. That's not the process. That, but that is what Siddha Pranali is. So to do Raganuga Bhakti, certain things are required. One thing which is required is that you should be at the stage of Nishta. You should have passed through anartha nivritti. You should have removed the anarthas from the heart. You have to be really fixed in your Krishna consciousness. And you've gone through anartha nivritti and you've come to the stage of nishta and ruchi. Then you can think about doing raganuga bhakti. Otherwise it's not recommended at all. And then we spoke also about the appropriate attitude for ISKCON members towards the practice of Raganuga Bhakti. We said you can do it if you have the permission from your Guru. You should have blessings from your spiritual master that he approves you as being qualified to go into Raganuga Bhakti. But it doesn't mean you give up it doesn't mean you give up service, it means you take on more service. You do more chanting, more hearing, more service. So that is the proper attitude. And you keep doing the other service, if you're doing Sankirtan and preaching, you keep doing that. You don't have to go and live in Vrindavan. 
You can stay wherever you are and chant and do Raganuga Bhakti there. You don't have to go, go to Vrindavan. You can do, you can go to Vrindavan, but it's not necessary. All right, and we're going to have this tomorrow. We're going to have this role play. One person is meditating on starting the practice of Raganuga Bhakti due to his perception that he has come to the appropriate platform based upon his understanding of the required qualifications. He thus seeks confirmation from an advanced devotee before beginning. What was the qualification required for Raganuga Bhakti? Bhaktavatsala? Bhaktavatsala Nishringa Prabhu, what is the qualification to come to take up Raganuga Bhakti? Um, I think free from anarthas, anartha nirvriti. Yes, you must have gone through anartha nirvriti. You must have come to a higher stage, nishta, where you're very fixed. All right, and so then the partner is acting as a senior devotee will mentor him and they will discuss several topics including anartha nivriti, intensity of greed, sadhana, importance of conditioning to offer substantial service to Prabhupada's mission, etc. All right, so we'll see a couple of devotees perform this. And here's one of your memorization verses. Sitala Mataji. Chen? Yes, Maharaj. Atashi Krishna Namade Nabave Gramyan Indrayai Seva Mukhi Hijivada Svayan Evas Puratyada Because Krishna's fault quality, pastas, et, et, et etc. Etc. Uh, are all on the um, uh, uh, abs absolute Ab absolute absolute platform. Material senses cannot therefore uh, option, uh, Ap option. appreciate uh, object. appreciate then, then, when a conditioned soul is awakened to Krishna consciousness and the render service by using his tongue to chant the, the Lord's holy name and test the uh, renounce of the Lord's food, the tongue is purified and the one gradually comes to understand who Krishna really is. Good. Okay. So that's one of your memorization verses, I think. It's a, an important verse. Right? We cannot understand Krishna by the senses. But when we use our tongue to chant and to taste prasada, then gradually we come to understand who Krishna really is. Right? That's what we all want. We want to understand who is Krishna really. We want to understand. Then we spoke about Yukta Vairagya. What's the meaning? Little Avatar Maharaji, Yukta Vairagya, what's the meaning? Mm, it means uh, uh, accept everything uh, uh, according, uh, accept everything favorable to Krishna. Uh, re renounce uh, uh, depend on whether it's uh, uh, benefit to the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. A proper, proper re uh, renunciation. Proper renunciation, yes. Means renunciation in relation to Krishna. Can you give an example? What is Yukta Vairagya? In, sorry, I didn't catch you. 
I want you to give an example of Yukta Vairagya. Oh. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, I, I think, uh, like me, myself, before I practice Krishna consciousness, uh, I, I, re I don't uh, I really eat any food. <laughs> Like the uh, some of the Buddhists, but after practicing Krishna consciousness, I I eat pasada uh, two times a day. I think it's uh, uh, in order to it's a kind of service. Eating prasada is your service to Krishna. Yes. Okay. Yukta vairagya. It means uh, just like if you have a motor car, so uh, then you may use the car for the service of Krishna, right? Use the car yes. for the service of Krishna. We use the car to take the devotees to go to the temple or to go for program. So yes. we may say car or oh, motor car, that's all maya. That is Maya, just so much waste of time, waste so much money to take care of the motor car. We yes. should we should just take we should just use it for Krishna. So we want to learn how to use everything for Krishna. So that is Yukta Vairagya. We don't have to give up the motor car. But somebody says, oh, motor car is Maya, I don't want to touch it. Just like there's money lying in the street, right? The money lies in the street. Now, if a jnani comes and he sees the money lying in the street, what will he think, Lila Avatar? You understand? Money is lying in the street. And yes. the jnani comes, a jnani, or a, you know, a vairagi, he comes and he sees the money on the street. So what will he do? He will not take it. Right, he will not take it. What will he say? It's a, it's a material thing. I will not, I don't care about it. All right, very good. And what about a karmi? What will the karmi do? Oh, I'm so lucky. Uh, so he will very happily take the money. And go and spend it, right? Yes. Go and spend it to buy, to buy alcohol or something. And what about the devotee when he finds the money? Uh, he will take it, uh, 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 using it for the service of the Lord, of the devotees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you take it, give it to the temple, give a donation to the temple, or you get, buy some books and give the books away to people or something. Yeah, that's in the service of Krishna. That is Yukta Vairagya. All right, so here's the verse. Melin, chant the verse. Okay. Yatahan Upa Yun Jadaha Nirbata Krishna Sabande Yotan Varakyan Uchate. When one is not attached to anything, but at the same time accept anything in relation to Krishna, one is rightly situated about about perceptiveness. Uh, uh, possessiveness. Possessiveness. <laughs> yeah, it's a big word, huh? Possessiveness. Possessiveness. Uh, possessiveness. Possessiveness. Okay, good. Oh, what was that? Oh. All right, lesson 11. We're looking at now chapters 17 to 19, entitled, Love of God. Love of God means prema bhakti. 
17 to 19. So we begin with the definition of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti. What is sadhana bhakti? Sadhana bhakti means action of the senses, which produces the stage of bhava, is called sadhana bhakti. Right? If you're asked for the definition of sadhana bhakti, you should say that. Action of the senses, which produces the stage of bhava, is called sadhana bhakti. Then what is Baba Bhakti? Please read the first paragraph of Nectar of Devotion, Chapter 17. Sudarshan Prabhu, can you do that? Chapter 17, the first paragraph? Yes, Maharaj. By the process of executing regulated devotional service, one is actually elevated onto the transcendental stage beyond the material modes of nature. At that time, one's heart becomes illuminated like the sun. The sun is far above the planetary system and there is no possibility of its being covered by any kind of cloud. Similarly, when a devotee is purified like the sun from his pure heart, there is a, a diffusion of ecstatic, ecstatic love which is more glorious than the sunshine. Only at that time is the attachment of Krishna perfect. Spontaneous, the devotee becomes eager to serve the Lord in his ecstatic love. At this stage, the devotee is on the platform of Uttama Adhikari, perfect devotion. Such a devotee has no agitation from the material affection and is interested only in the service of Radha and Krishna. All right. Yes. So this is the process of coming to the stage of Bhava Bhakti. You have to become an Uttama Adhikari. Right? You should, be, you should be a very advanced devotee. You should be a perfect devotee. So we understand it's not very easy to come to this stage of bhava bhakti. Okay, here's the verse. When devotional service is situated on the transcendental platform, of pure goodness. It is like a ray of the sunlight of love for Krishna. At such a time, devotional service causes the heart to be softened by various tastes and it is called bhava, emotion. Bhava, probably put, 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 we put here emotion, but sometimes we say ecstasy. Bhava is also known as ecstasy. So devotional service means the, the platform of pure goodness. Shuddha sattva, Shuddha sattva vishesh atma. You can see the verse. So Shuddha sattva means Pure goodness, above even the mode of goodness, it's pure goodness. And it is like a ray of the sunlight of love for Krishna. It's just one ray of the sunlight. So at that time, then the, the devotional service causes the heart to be softened. The heart becomes soft. When sometimes, if you do renunciation, if you're a vairagi or a jnani, you have a lot of knowledge or a lot of renunciation, 
Will your heart become soft? Vibhu Chaitanya. If I have a lot of gyan and a lot of renunciation, will it make my heart soft? No, Maharaj, it will not guarantee it. What will happen? You just become more knowledgeable. Okay, what about my heart? Is it going to become soft? Uh, not necessarily. What's going to happen to my heart? That I'm not sure about. Is it going to clean my heart? I'm not sure, Maharaj. No? Well, usually when we cultivate knowledge and renunciation, if it's not in relation to Krishna, then what will happen? Then the heart will become hard because there's no connection to Krishna. We want the heart to become soft. So it's mentioned here, the ray of the sunlight of love for Krishna causes the heart to be softened or the devotional service rather causes the heart to be softened. So the devotional, the service we're doing that will make our heart soft, that is called bhava or emotion or ecstasy. We get ecstasy, right? You want ecstasy? Who wants ecstasy? How much ecstasy do you want? How quickly do you want the ecstasy? Do you want to have ecstasy for a long time or just for a short time? A long time. You want to stay in ecstasy, right? Exactly. So, we have to get this, we have to, exp we have to come to the stage of pure goodness. It means we have to get free of the modes of ignorance, and passion and goodness, and then you come to the stage of pure goodness. So that pure goodness is like a ray of love for Krishna. You get that, you get that ray of love for Krishna and that causes the heart to be softened. That is called bhava. So, Srila Prabhupada, oh, this is Banu Swami's translation from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So, what is Bhava Bhakti? That part of Bhakti is called Bhava, whose essence is Samvit and Ladini Shakti. <laughs> Samvit and Ladini, what does it mean? Samvit Shakti means what? Bhaktivatsala Prabhu, you know Samvit means? I don't remember. What about Lad Ladini Shakti? It's the energy of Krishna, pleasure potency of Krishna. The which, which potency? Aladini Shakti. Yes. Left, left, left. Which potency is it? The Krishna's energy, it's the pleasure potency, I think, I'm not sure. Yes, it's the pleasure potency. And Samvit is a... I don't remember that. Much. Yes? Who knows? Uh, knowledge? Yes, knowledge, right. Knowledge potency. So you've got these two potencies. So Bhava Bhakti, Bhakti, it's called bhava when the essence is samvit and ladini shakti, which is one of the ray, one ray, which is one ray of the sun of prema that will soon rise in the heart. 
and that softens the heart with desires to meet, to serve and exchange love with the Lord. So we should understand the nature of this bhava bhakti, that it's one ray of the sun of prema. We want to get prema. We want to go on and get prema, real love of God. We don't want to just get one ray. We want to get the full sun, the full sun of love of God. So the full sun, that is prema. And one ray, that is bhava. And that bhava softens the heart. And with the heart softening, we develop the desire to meet. Who do we want to meet? Who's going to meet? Krishna. Yes, going to hope. I hope so. I hope we're going to meet Krishna. I hope so. Meet Krishna and serve Krishna and exchange love with him. Wonderful. Okay, so there's Krishna with the gopis. Jai, Krishna Bhagavan Ki. Hmm. Oh. Okay. All right, who's going to read? Sudarshan Prabhu, can you read this? Yes, Maharaj. Bhava Bhakti Swarpa Lakshana Shuddha Swatva Visheshatma Each Bhava is, is the stage in which Shuddha Swatva enters the devotee's heart. When a person eagerly wants to serve the Lord, the Shuddha Swatva potency may enter his heart through the mercy of a pure devotee. When Shuddha Swatva touches the heart, it energizes the seed of Prema lying dormant and and causes it to sprout Ankura. Consequently, Srila Rupa Goswami describes Bhava as Prema Premankura, the first sprout of Prema. Bhava is Prema, but in preliminary budding state. This is also indicated by the term Prema Suryamsu, a ray of sun of Prema. Bhava Bhava is the sun ray. Prema is the sun itself. The sun and the sun rays are qualitatively non-different, but there is a distinction in the quantity, quantitative intensity. Bhava is the onset of prema as dawn is the onset of the day. When the first ray of dawn appears, one can be sure that the full light of the sun will soon rise. Similarly, when one achieves bhava, the full light of prema will manifest very quickly. Waves of devotion, pages 130 to 131. All right. Thank you, Prabhu. So we're hearing about bhava bhakti swarupa lakshana. What does it mean, swarupa lakshana? Who knows the meaning? Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, do you know? No, Maharaj, I do not know the meaning. Bhakta Vasau, do you know Prabhu? No. No. What about Bhakta Elias? No, I don't know. You don't remember? We had this before, Swarupa Lakshana. We, we covered, remember? There was Tatasta Lakshana and Swarupa Lakshana. Rupa Lakshana was like the main ones, but I don't remember the exact meaning of it. Hmm. The main points. Maybe some of the Madhijis know? Subodhini, Keshavi Madhiji? Swarupa Lakshana, what does it mean? Hare Krishna Maharaj. So Swarupa Lakshana uh, means these characteristics are a must for the uh, definition. As in these characteristics should be present. Whereas um, uh, Tathasa Lakshana are marginal characteristics. Yes, Varupa Lakshana is the essential characteristic. It, essential. Should, it should be there, right. 
and the other tatasta may be there, may not. Right? So this is the meaning. So Baba comes at the stage. To come to Baba, you have to be at the stage of Shuddha Sattva. Shuddha Sattva meaning pure goodness, meaning there's no passion, no tamagun, no rajagun, not even sattva gun. It's only pure goodness, Shuddha Sattva. So when a person wants to serve Krishna, the Shuddha Sattva potency may enter his heart through the mercy of a pure devotee. And when the Shuddha Sattva touches the heart, then what's the effect? It energizes the seed of prema. That seed is lying dormant. And he causes it, he causes it to sprout. So the seed sprouts up and Rupa Goswami describes this the first sprout of prema. Bhava is prema, but in a preliminary budding state. This is indicated, right? A ray of the sun of prem. Bhava is the sun ray. Prema is the sun. So that's important to remember, the relationship between bhava and prema. Bhava is one ray and prema is the whole sun. And then it says the sun and the sun rays are the same, they're non-different. But there's a distinction in the quantitative intensity. Qualitative, no difference, but quantitative, there's a difference. One in quality, different in quantity. Bhava is the onset of prema. So the beginning of prem comes with bhava. And then with the beginning of prem, then there's some, well, there's some, when the first rays of dawn appear, then we can be sure the sun will soon rise. Just like with the beginning of bhava, then one day we will come to prema. I didn't, I don't know how many lessons you're having, but the first ray, the dawn, early morning, the first rays of the sun appear and then by the middle of the day, the full light will be there. Okay, so we have to be at Shuddha Sattva. What does it mean? The Samvit Shakti means the Lord's cognitive potency descends into the heart and empowers one to perceive and know Krishna. So cognitive potency, the knowledge potency, it come, enters into the heart and we're able to know Krishna. That's Samvit Shakti. And the Ladini Shakti is the Lord's pleasure our devotional potency. And it also comes into the devotee's heart and empowers him to manifest love of Godhead, to manifest the full goal of life, Krishna Prema, by the mercy of Ladini Shakti. Ladini Shakti is personified by who? Srimati Radharani. Yeah. Yes, right, Radha Rani, right, thank you. All right, who would like to read for us? Will I continue? Let somebody else read. Madhaji can read. Narayani, are you there? Narayani, no? She was there earlier, but I think she got disconnected. She had some internet issues, so she kept logging off and on. She is not here right now, Maharaj. Can I read, Maharaj? Okay. Bhava Bhakti's Swarupa Lakshana, Shuddha Sattva. The combination of Samvit and Hladini is called Shuddha Sattva. When one is in contact with Shuddha Sattva, 
one simultaneously feels nourishment pushti and satisfaction tushti the samvit potency nourishes one by cognition of krishna and the hladini potency satisfies one by devotion for krishna dhanurdhar swami's notes on uh, waves of devotion mm-hmm. all right so should what is should, what is shuddha sattva it's described it's a combination of the samvit and the ladini potency and when we are in contact with that shuddha sattva or pure goodness then we feel we feel nourishment which is called pushti and satisfaction just like when we're eating when we're eating we feel nourishment and satisfaction one after another so the same way the samvit potency nourishes us by giving us n- cognition or understanding of krishna and the ladini potency satisfies us by giving us devotion for krishna so two effects one is giving co- knowledge and another is giving devotion the mood of devotion all right we're speaking about we were speaking there about baba bhakti swarupa lakshana now we're speaking about baba bhakti tatasta lakshana right tatasta lakshana means sometimes there not every time so one point is chita mashraya mashrinya chita mashri mat mastrinya anyway the effect is it softens the heart somebody read certainly the heart is still framed which in spite of chanting the holy name with concentration does not change when ecstasy takes place and tears fill the eyes and they are stand on end shrimad bhagavatam 2.3.24 we read this verse before from the second canto shrimad bhagavatam that although we're chanting the holy name and tears may be coming from the eyes but if our heart does not change then it's no good the heart has to become soft that is it's not just shedding tears and hair standing the heart has to change we have to feel love for krishna Keep reading, Prabhu. One heart softens to such an extent that he is uh, sorry that he is often found to be visible, moved by emotions. Wave of devotion, page one hundred thirty-two. All right. So the heart softens. How? how what makes a heart soften? the bhakti because he's doing devotional service so his heart is being is being transformed is becoming soft and the, when the heart becomes soft then you will be more affected will be more moved by devotion by the emotions emotions different emotions of love of krishna which the devotee will feel maybe hearing about krishna's pastimes all right so that's number 1 we are speaking about chitta mashrimya that softens the heart number 2 ruchibi gives rise to various tastes prapti abilasa desire to achieve krishna and anukuya abilasa desire to please krishna with various services and then next one sandar sandara abilasa all 
Okay, so here's the three of them together. We're speaking about the tatasta, the marginal characteristics of bhava bhakti. They'll be there sometimes, they're not there all the time. Ruchi B gives rise to taste, and then we get different tastes. There's a desire to achieve Krishna, desire to please Krishna, and the desire to be close at heart with Krishna. So we see different kinds of tastes to be experienced by the devotee. Some devotees, they just want to be with Krishna, desire to achieve Krishna. Somebody else wants to please Krishna and somebody else just wants to be close with Krishna. Not all devotees are satisfied just to be close to Prabhupada. There would be devotees who wanted to give service to Prabhupada. And other devotees, they wanted to be and go everywhere with Prabhupada, go and travel around the world with him. There were devotees who wanted to do that. They wanted the opportunity to associate with Prabhupada. So not everybody gets that opportunity. Okay, three characteristics for Bhava Bhakti, that's Tatasta characteristic. Who wants to get Bhava Bhakti? Anybody interested? Yes, yeah? Maharaj. You're interested, Prabhu? You want to get Bhava Bhakti? Yes, Maharaj. All right. So there's two ways. One way is by practice and the other way is by mercy. Bhava Bhakti you can get by mercy. Do you think you deserve the mercy? No. You don't think so? I don't think so. Anybody, anybody thinks they're qualified for the mercy to get Baba Bhakti? Whose mercy do you need? Krishna's mercy, Guru's mercy. Yeah, you need the mercy from somebody who's got Bhava Bhakti. Somebody who has Bhava Bhakti, they can give you the blessings to get Bhava Bhakti. So it may be Krishna, it may be Guru, it may be some senior devotee, but somebody who is advanced enough to give you that kind of blessing. So mercy is not very easy, very difficult, very rare that you can get mercy. Any other way you can get Bhava Bhakti? That is described by practice. By practice means you have to practice. You want it. you have to want it very badly. So you you will go, you'll wait outside and you wait for everybody to come. And when you see the big man come, then you can go and approach him and ask him. We need some land, we need some money, we need this, do that for us. So there's two ways by which we can practice this. One way we can get it by Vaidhi Bhakti and the other way is by Raganuga Bhakti. What's the difference? But, uh, what's the difference? Who knows? Yeah. Yes, Vibhu Chaitanya, do you know? Raganuga Bhakti is spontaneous devotion and Vaidhi Bhakti is uh, following the instructions. Yeah, yeah, right. Vaidhi Bhakti is following the instructions and Raganuga Bhakti is by spontaneous devotion. So does that mean they don't have to follow the instructions anymore? Vibhu? Do they still have to follow the rules and regulations? They do have to follow the rules and regulations. Well, why? They just got, you know, they... I, I mean, they do not have to follow the rules and regulations. It comes natural to them. Uh, the devotional service? Yes. 
naturally they will follow the rules and regulations without thinking about it. By spontaneous love for Krishna, their, their desire to serve Krishna is spontaneous. They don't think about it. They're so eager, so enthusiastic to serve Krishna. But Vaidhi Bhakti, oh, I better do this. If I don't do this, I'll get cursed. Oh, I'll get in trouble. Guru will not be pleased. Like that. So to come to Bhava Bhakti, there's two ways. One is by mercy and one is by practice. And by practice there are two ways. Practice means either Vaidhi Bhakti or Raganuga Bhakti. All right? What is that? Something to be read here. Okay, chapter 17, paragraphs 3 and 4. All right, who's going to read paragraph 3? Yes? Let's hear Sanjaya. May I ask us more question? Oh yes, you have a question? Yes? If uh, on the slide before there was Vaidhi Bhakti and Raganuga Bhakti, but there were two ways. Is it not that we first have Vaidhi Bhakti and then come into Raganuga Bhakti? So that they depend on each other or... I'm sorry, could you say that again? Is it, is it not that we first have Vaidhi Bhakti and then Raganuga Bhakti? And is it not our two separate ways that it is actually one way, but first Vaidhi and then Raganuga? First Vaidhi, well, the, but you can see here that you can come to Baba without going to Raganuga. Okay, this was my question. Okay, good. You yeah. can go direct from Vaidhi Bhakti by practice, you can go to Baba Bhakti. You don't need to go okay. through Raganuga. Okay, thank you. Raganuga is for those who have a particular desire to follow some resident of Vrindavan. Not necessarily for every devotee. So you can go to Baba directly without going through Raganuga from Vaidhi Bhakti. Thank you Prabhu, it's a good point. You brought that up. Bring it to everyone's attention. All right, chapter 17, paragraph 3. Who's going to read? Sanjay Mataji, are you there? Sanjay, Hare Krishna. Shobhamayi Mataji, is she there? I don't see her, Maharaj. Okay. It's, it's uh, the other lady there then? Naraini Mataji was here, but again, I think she got disconnected. Mm. Naraini Mataji just messaged me. She is having net internet issues, not being able to connect. Always getting disconnected. Oh. Okay. So, uh, who's going to read then? Vibhu Chaitanya Prabhu, can you read for us? Okay. Third paragraph. Elevation to this stage of ecstasy can be possible in two ways. One way is by constant association with pure devotees. The other way is by the special mercy of Krishna or by the mercy of a pure devotee of Krishna. Elevation to the ecstatic stage of life is generally attained through association with pure devotees. While elevation to that stage by special mercy of Krishna or his devotee is very rare. The purport is that one should execute devotional service rigidly in the association of devotees, so, so, so that there will be certain certainty in raising oneself to the ecstatic position. In special cases, of course, there is special favor from Krishna, and although we should always expect that, we should not sit idly and simply wait for Krishna's special mercy. The regular duties must be performed. 
It is just as when something, sometimes it, it is found that a person who never attended school or college may be recognized as a great scholar, or an honorary degree from great universities may be offered to him. But this does not mean that one should avoid school and expect to automatically receive an honorary degree from some university. Similarly, one should devoutly execute the regulative principles of devotional service and at the same time hope for Krishna's favor or for his devotee's favor. Okay, thank you Prabhu. Very nice. So, did you get a degree? Did you go to college? Did you get honorary degree, Vibhu Chaitanya? No, Maharaj. Did you go to college? No, I'm, I just finished high school. Okay. So do you think you'll get an honorary degree or will you have to go to college? I will have to go to college. Okay. Back to Elias, he's also going to college, right? He didn't get the honorary yeah. degree. Who got honorary degree? Do you know anyone? No, I do not know anybody with one. So not very common to get honorary degree. Some people do get it. Rabindranath Tagore. Do you know the name? No. Rabindranath Tagore. He's a Bengali. Tagore. He's very famous. Famous writer. Rabindranath Tagore. So he got an honorary degree from Oxford. They told him, you come here, we will give you an honorary degree. He didn't go to college, but he wrote, and he wrote, and he wrote nice people, they liked his poetry and his writing. So they gave him an honorary degree. Sometimes there was one man in Hong Kong, he was an Indian man, a businessman, so he gave a lot of money to the university. He gave a big donation to one university and the university gave him an honorary degree <laughs> because he gave them a lot of money. <laughs> so he got an honorary degree from them. If you can please the university by giving them a lot of money, they're very happy. They'll give you honorary degree. <laughs> All right, Bhaktabhatsa Prabhu, read paragraph 4. Yes, Maharaj. An example of rising to the stage of ecstatic love by executing the regulative principles of devotional service is given in the life story of Narada, which is described to Vyasadeva in Srimad Bhagavatam. Narada tells there of his previous life and how he developed to the stage of ecstatic love. He was engaged in the service of great devotees and used to hear their talks and songs. Because he had the opportunity to hear these pastimes and songs of Krishna from the mouths of pure devotees, he became very attracted within his heart. Because he had become so eager to hear these topics, he gradually developed within, within himself an ecstatic love for Krishna. This ecstatic love is prior to the pure love of Krishna. Because in the next verse, Narada confirms that by the gradual process of hearing from the great sages, he developed love of Godhead. In that connection, Narada continues to say in the first canto, fifth chapter, verse 28 of the Bhagavatam, First, I pass my days in the association of the great sages during the rainy autumn season. Every morning and evening, I heard them while they were singing and chanting the Hare Krishna mantra. And thus, my heart gradually became purified. As soon as I heard them with great attention, the influence of the modes of material ignorance and passion disappeared, and I became firmly fixed in devotional service to the Lord. All right, thank you, Prabhu. So, this is the process of purification, right? What's the example? What do we learn from Narada Muni's example? Bhaktivasa? This example, what, how did Narada Muni get purified? We should serve the devotees and hear from them the chanting and like talking of Krishna. <laughs> yes. Right. What did he do to serve the devotees? He, I 
to look, but like he offered them food and accepted their remnants and things like that. Yeah, right. Okay. Simple process, not very difficult. He brought their food. Maybe it's, it washed their dirty cloths, brought their cloths to them. Like that, he was serving them. And they were blessing him. They give blessings to him. They said also, he was not naughty. He was not interested in playing games and things like that. He was a, he was a good, serious young boy. And so they blessed him. They gave him their blessings. And with their blessings, then he got purified and he awakened love of God. Of course, it, with their blessings, his, he lost his mother and he was free from all family affection and he could go and wander everywhere. And he went and wandered the world. He saw all different kinds of places. And then he fixed his mind on the Lord. And he awakened love of God. So very nice. So Bhava Bhakti. Achieving Bhava Bhakti. Yes? Shashikant Prabhu, read. Ah, yes, Achieving Bhava Bhakti. Shri Prabhupada uses the term association with pure devotees is uh, synonymously with executing the practice of devotional service. A pure devotee has no business other than hearing and chanting about Krishna. Therefore, association with a pure devotee automatically implies practicing devotional service. Babes of Devotion, page 132-133. Right. You get association with pure devotees, they're not going to play games with you. You're not going to go for a cricket match. It's going to be devotional service. Right? Hearing and chanting about Krishna is our only business, nothing else. This is as the meaning of association. Sometimes people think, oh, we had some association, we were talking about the weather, we were talking about the television programs, we were talking about the family and the children and their school homework. And then, Oh, that's not association. Association with devotees means hearing and chanting about Krishna. That is the real meaning of association. Hmm? You can see all the devotees there. What are they all doing? Chanting, Mother, chanting. Yes, they're all chanting, right. You can see that Radna Swami there, I think, with all the devotees. Okay, so here's the verse, very nice verse. Third Canto Srimad Bhagavatam. Satam Prasanga Mama Virya Samvido. Bhavanti Ritkar Narasayana Kata Tishjoshna Dashva Pavargavatmani Shradharatir Bhakti Anukramishyati In the association of pure devotees, Sata means the pure devotees and Prasangam, association. So satam prasangam, in the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation and thereafter he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. All right? Then real devotion and devotional service begin. Real devotion meaning bhakti. I mean, should us pure devotion. Shuddha-sattva. So we go through these different stages. 
Uh, we cultivate knowledge, we're hearing, we purify the ear and the heart, we cultivate the knowledge, gradually we become advanced, then we get free, and then our attraction becomes fixed. Our attraction, in other words, we don't get deviated, we don't get drawn away to the maya, to the material world. We become fixed, then real devotion and devotional service begin. This is Lord Kapila's instruction to his mother, Devahuti. He's telling his mother what she needs to do to become advanced, right? All right, now we're going to read more from Prabhupada, chapter 17, paragraphs 8 to 11. All right, paragraph 8 to 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Is it in the Nararya Purana? In, in the Padma Purana, I think that's... In the Padma Purana? Paragraph 8. I think it begins from sometimes, however. Oh, okay. Yes, in Nararya Purana. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, go ahead. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Shaki can't hear it. Sometimes, however. Sometimes, however, it is found that without undergoing any devotional process, one of all of sudden develops devotion, devotion for Lord Krishna. This sudden development of devotional attitude in a person must be understood as a special mercy of Krishna or of his devotee. This apparently accidental development of ecstatic feeling through the godless mercy of Krishna can be divided into three groups simply by speaking, simply by glancing, and simply by good wishes. In the Go ahead. In the Naradiya Puran, there is a statement about development of ecstatic love simply by speaking. Lord Krishna said to Narada, O best of the Brahmanas, I wish that you may develop another devotional service to me which is full of transcendental bliss and all, auspici all auspiciousness. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. In the Skanda Purana, there is a statement about developing ecstatic love toward Krishna simply by glancing. It is stated there, when the inhabitants of Changal province saw the personality of God as Krishna, they were so stricken with feeling that they could not withdraw their glance from him. Keep going. As far as heartfelt wishes are concerned, there is a statement in the Sukha Samhita where Narada tells Sri Vyasde, You have a son who is the greatest devotee of the personality of Godhead, and I can observe that without any following of the regular two principles of the devotional service, he is already enriched with many of the symptoms achieved by execution of devotional service after many, many births. Mm -hmm. Yes. One more paragraph. As far as, I'm oh, sorry, as far ecstatic love for Krishna, there is a statement in 7th Canto, 4th chapter, verse 36 of Svad Bhagavatam, in which Narada addressing King Yudhishthir, addresses King Yudhishthir, my dear king, it is very difficult to describe the character of Pranath. He developed a natural attraction for Krishna, and whatever I can explain about his character will simply be an arrangement of words. His actual character is impossible to describe. This means that Narada himself admitted that the natural development of Pranath's ecstatic love was by the grace of Lord Krishna. Okay, thank you, Prabhu. So this, we're hearing about different ways in which people develop their ecstatic love for Krishna. And the first one actually we didn't read in the Padma Purana, 
there is a story of a neophyte devotee who, in order to raise herself to the ecstatic platform, danced all night to invoke the Lord's grace upon her. So that's an example, a neophyte devotee, somehow they came to the platform of Bhava Bhakti. They came to the ecstatic platform, means Bhava Bhakti. Wow, that's very quick. She was a neophyte devotee, but she danced all night and she got ecstatic love for Krishna. So, if you like to get ecstatic love, you can try it. You can dance all night and see. <laughs> there are different ways to develop ecstatic love. Okay, here you can see diagrammatically. How to come to Bhava Bhakti? Well, one way is by practice and the other way is by mercy. By mercy. And we've shown that in order to come to Bhava Bhakti, there has to be good wishes somehow. Who got Bhava Bhakti by mercy? Who was the example who came to Bhava Bhakti by mercy? Prahlad Maharaj. Yeah. Prahlad Maharaj. Anybody else? Anybody else? Narada Muni? Mm, the son of Yas? I, yeah, I thought the son of Yas, right. Is and it? Also, the inhabitants of Jangala province. What's the story about that? I don't understand. The story about the inhabitants of Jangala province? Yes. <laughs> Well, the story is, you see, the, the inhabitants of that province, they simply saw Krishna. And so simply by seeing him, they were so stricken with feeling that they could not stop looking at him. So glances, by glance, they saw Krishna. And by their glance, they, they came to Bhava Bhakti. The inhabitants of Jangala province. I think they're like tribal people, like Aborigine people, you see. But they saw Krishna. They, they didn't have any real interaction with Krishna. They simply saw him. And they came to the stage of love with God. It's so wonderful. All right? And, and Prahlad Maharaj has given us an example also. It said, uh, it was mentioned about Prahlad Maharaj, that he developed a natural attraction for Krishna. And whatever I can, what, whatever I can explain about his character will simply be an arrangement of words. His actual character is impossible to describe. So, Prahlad Maharaj had nat natural development of love of God by, by the grace of Lord Krishna. So he had the grace of Krishna. They didn't know how he got so much love of God. It must have been by the grace of Krishna. And similarly, it's also, isn't it also mentioned about Sukadeva Goswami? Maybe not. I don't see it. So could they go from Yes, Maharaj. In the paragraph, it starts, as far as heartfelt wishes are concerned, there is a statement in Shuka Samhita, where Narada tells Sri Vyasadeva, you have a son who is the greatest devotee of the personality of Godhead. Oh, thank you, Maharaj. You're right. Okay, I see it now. Yeah. You have a son who is the greatest devotee. And I can observe 
that without any following of the regulated principles of devotional service, he is already enriched with many of the symptoms achieved by the execution of devotional service after many, many births. So that is, that is also mercy. So some people, they came to Bhava Bhakti by blessings. Some people, we saw, heard about the, the inhabitants of Jangala problem, they saw Krishna, saw their glances, some by words and some by the good wishes. So some people practice, they have to practice to get Bhava Bhakti and other people get it by mercy. It's not very common. Sukadeva Goswami, Prahlad Maharaj, these kind of people, inhabitants of Jangala province, they're, they're very special, very fortunate. They got to mercy. We, prob we have to do practice to come to that stage. So we want to understand what are actually the symptoms of somebody who has come to the level of Bhava Bhakti. Now sometimes we wrongly understand and we think that if somebody is shedding tears and they're trembling in the body, we think, oh, that's their bhava, they've got bhava bhakti. And sometimes it happens, you know, you go to the kirtan and you have kirtan and people are chanting and dancing and then suddenly someone falls on the ground and he rolls on the ground He's going, oh, Krishna, oh, Krishna, Krishna. And he's rolling on the ground. And then he gets up. And then he goes out and he smokes a beady. Smokes a cigarette or something. So, you know, some people, they make a show of the display of Bhava Bhakti. They imitate that they're actually advanced. So there are certain symptoms which you cannot imitate and which you also cannot hide. So it's mentioned here, one can neither imitate nor conceal these symptoms. Now this is very important. Usually when we have the test, this is usually one of the questions. They will ask you, what are the nine symptoms of Bhava Bhakti? So you may like to learn these things. I'm not making the test, but I know in previous years, usually, this was the kind of question they would ask. They wanted to know, and you had to list all nine of these symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. So first one, avya, av, avyarta kala, kaladvam, avyarta kaladvam, never wasting time but always engaged in devotional service, right? Time is a very valuable thing. What did Chanakya say about time? So, Sudarshan Prabhu, do you know? What did, what did Chanakya Pandit say about time? No more words. What about Shashik, Shashikan Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, uh, Chalakya Pandi uh, said that uh, even one moment wasted, it cannot, cannot be brought back even by paying millions of dollars. Yes, right. So, one moment wasted, you can't buy it back for any amount. So, time is very valuable. Right? Sitala, what do the Chinese say about time? Yes, very good. Yes, if you do good, you'll get good. If you do bad, you get bad. And you can buy an inch of gold, but you cannot buy one inch of time. You cannot buy an inch of time. You can buy, understand? And we say, always stay engaged in Krishna consciousness. It's the first thing. Somebody who's on Bhava Bhakti, 
Then the second thing, shanti, to remain tolerant and patient even amid great disturbance. We have, okay? Yes, Maharaj. Yes. The line breaking sometimes? Okay, second thing, remain tolerant and patient, even though disturbed. Third thing, indifferent to, sub, to objects of sense. The line is very unstable. Who can read this for us? There are two types of detachment by Ragya and Virakti. Before one achieves the stage of Bhava, he may be able to manifest by Ragya. He can keep himself forcibly separated from the objects of sense gratification and thus control his senses. At the stage of Bhava, however, one manifests the superior type of detachment. The superior detachment is Virakti, wherein one completely loses all taste for the objects of the senses. Thus, his senses remain in, entirely controlled, even if he is directly in the midst of sense objects. Thank you, Prabhu. So, two kinds of detachment. There is Vairakya and Virakti. So, this is Virakti. This is the higher stage of detachment. Vairagya is, you may still have a taste, but you're trying, you, by force you're keeping yourself away. But virakti, you don't even think about it. You have no taste for, for material enjoyment. The senses are so controlled. So this is the point. This is virakti, indifferent to the objects of sense gratification, not attracted. So this is important. And then the fourth stage, mana shunyata, pridelessness, to be without pride. This is an important principle, devotee, right? We have to give up pride. Intoxication is another pride. We're very proud of things. We become intoxicated, we become proud. We have to give up pride and we have to become humble, pridelessness. So it's very important. We cannot chant the holy name properly so long as we're proud. So giving up pride. And then number five, asabandha, firm faith that Krishna will deliver one to the highest perfection. Even though one feels low, and utterly unqualified to achieve it on his own. So Asha Bandha, faith that Krishna will bring us. We feel our, we have no qualification ourselves, but we're depending on Krishna to deliver us to the perfection. Then number six, Samutkanta, eagerness for achieving pure loving service. We have to have that eagerness, we want to become pure. That's, that's important also, we have to have that kind of enthusiasm to come to that stage of pure devotion. Number seven, Namagani Sadaruchi. Constant attraction to chanting Hare Krishna. Right? We should be always chanting Hare Krishna. Number eight, Asakti Stad Ganakyane. Addiction to glorifying Krishna's qualities. Addicted to glorifying Krishna's qualities. This is very nice addiction. 
right? You always want to be thinking, talking about Krishna. So we should have that addiction. And then number nine, Pritistad Vasati Stali, attachment for living in the Dham, Haribo. I'm attached to living in the Mayapur Dham, Haribo. I want to live in the Holy Dham, Vrindavan Dham. We should be attached to live in the Holy Dham. This is one of the stages. So there are nine symptoms, reliable symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. We should know these, these things. This is very important for us to know. Usually they will ask this in the exam. So you have to learn this, right? First one, very important one, avyarta kalat bam, don't waste time. And then shanti, be tolerant, don't get disturbed. Virakti, don't think even about sense enjoyment, S stay away from all sense gratification. Number four, give up pride, no pride. Don't be proud. Number five, depend on Krishna to help us to come to this stage, Ashabanda. Number six, be eager to become pure devotee, Samatkanta. Number seven, taste for chanting the holy name, Namagani Sadaruchi. Number eight, Asakti Stad. Gunakyame, addiction to glorifying Krishna, and finally, Pritistad Vasati Stale, attachment for living in the Dham. Nine symptoms, they're all mentioned. We want to come to the stage of Baba Bhakti, this is how you can understand who is really at Baba. They should show this kind, they should have this kind of a qualification. This is actually a qualification. All right? Then we're going to go ahead. The next chapter is called Prema Bhakti. After Bhava comes Prema. Remember, Bhava was the ray, and Prema was what? Kholsan Maharaj. Huh? Yeah, Bhava was one ray and Prema was the planet, right? The whole sun. So when that Bhava softens the heart completely, becomes endowed with a great feeling of possessiveness in relation to the Lord and becomes very much condensed and intensified, it is called prema by learned scholars. So when the bhava softens the heart completely and you develop a feeling of possessiveness in relation to Krishna, you're thinking, Krishna is mine, and you become very much, that feeling becomes condensed and intensified, that is prema, love of God. So we want to feel that Krishna is mine. It, it is the intensified state of bhava. Sandra, san, Sandra, remember Sandranatma, Vicheshatma? Sandrananda Visheshatma gives inconceivable happiness. One of the one of the symptoms of uh, prema. Remember, there were two items for sadhana bhakti, and then there were four items for bhava bhakti, and six items for prema bhakti. So Sandrananda Vishesh Atma. So here again, Sandra intensified, intensified state of bhava, 
This is Prema's Swarupa Lakshana. Swarupa means what? What does it mean, Swarupa Lakshana? Essential characteristic. The essential characteristic, okay. And here's the Tatasta. Tatasta Lakshana. What does it mean, Tatasta Lakshana? Yes? What does it mean? Marginal characteristics. Marginal characteristic, yeah. And here you can see, so the, the essential characteristic was that it intensifies the state of bhava. And the marginal characteristic, it softens the heart. Marked by highly possessive ownership of Sri Krishna. All right, someone can read this for me. Yes, I can again. Thank in you. In Bhakti, one gets vision of the Lord and understands his eternal relationship with Krishna. However, in Prima Bhakti, one actually enters the Lord's past times in one's eternal spiritual identity, overwhelmed with the mood that Krishna is my son, or Krishna is my friend, or Krishna is my Lord. Based of Devotion, page 146. All right, so this is the sense of ownership of Krishna. Krishna is my son, or Krishna is my friend, or Krishna is my lover. So what rasa would that be? Krishna is my son? Madhurjo? No. Uh, no, Krishna is my son. Yes, uh, Krishna is my son, that is Vatsavya, right. Vatsavya. Krishna is my friend. Uh, uh, Sakkaras. Sa Sakkaras, right. And Krishna is my lover. Madhurya. That is Madhurya, right. So that's the idea that we're thinking like that. We're thinking Krishna is my possession. We have a possessive ownership of Krishna. So in Bhava Bhakti, we get vision of the Lord and we understand his eternal we understand the eternal relationship with Krishna. But in Prema Bhakti, we actually enter into the Lord's pastime in our eternal spiritual identity. And we're, we will think, of course, according to our, the mood which we have, according to the mood we're having with Krishna, the rasa we're having with Krishna, that Krishna is my son, or Krishna is my friend, or my lover. So according to our mood, we'll think like that. And we enter in, we actually take part in the pastime. So the Goswamis, they were doing that. They were actually meditating and they were seeing, they were taking part in pastimes with Krishna and with the gopis. And they were, of course, they were manjaris and they were there in Krishna's pastimes, in their meditation. So that is prema bhakti, where you actually enter into Krishna's pastimes. All right, we have to read something here. Chapter 19. Asos what is it? Association with pure devotees. First paragraph. Alright, yes. Yeah, if you look at page if you look at the first paragraph of chapter eighteen, you'll see the nine symptoms of Bhava Bhakti. That's the very first paragraph. They're all mentioned and then there's they're described for us. And then we go on to chapter 19. Read the first paragraph. Yes? Sudarshan Prabhu, can you read? 
Yes, Maharaj. When one's desire to love Krishna is uh, in one's particular relationship becomes intensified, this is known as pure love of Godhead. In the beginning, a devotee is engaged in regulative principles of devotional service by the order of his spiritual master. When one thereby becomes completely purified of all material contamination, there develops an attachment and taste for devotional service. This taste and attachment, when gradually intensified in the course of time, becomes love. The, the word love can be actually applied only in relationship with the personality of Godhead. In the material world, love is not applicable at all. What goes on under the name of love is the material world, world is nothing but lust. There is a gulf of difference between, the, between love and lust, like difference between gold and iron. In the Narada uh, Panchar, Panchatra, it is clearly stated that when lust is completely transferred to the Supreme Godhead and the concept of kinship is completely reposed in him, such is accepted as pure love of God by great authorities like Vishma, Pralada, Uddhava and Narada. Yes, right. Okay. So, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, I think uh, this first paragraph you, you were supposed to read under the heading Association with Pure Devotees. Sorry? We were read, supposed to read first paragraph uh, under the heading Association with Pure Devotees. What chapter? Uh, same chapter. Same chapter. Huh? 19, 19. Well, we just read chapter. Yes, 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 yes. I just read the first paragraph. It will be in the uh, uh, subhead of association with pure devotees. Okay, okay. So, shall I read it once again? Oh, where is that subheading association of pure? There's one heading, Maharaj. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go then. Read that. Okay. Uh, although many different process of developing love of Godhead have been explained so far, Srila Rupa Goswami now gives us a general description of how one can best achieve such a high position. The beginning of ecstatic love of Godhead is basically faith. There are many societies and associations of pure devotees and if someone with just a little bit faith begins to associate with such societies, his advancement to pure devotional service is rapid. The influence of pure devotee is such that if someone comes to associate with him with a little faith, one gets the chance of hearing about the Lord from the authoritative scriptures like Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. Thus, by the mercy of, of the Lord, who is situated in everyone's heart, one gradually develops his faith in the description of such uh, authoritative scriptures. This is the first stage of association with pure devotees. In the second stage, after one becomes a little advanced and mature, he automatically offers to follow principles of devotional service under the guidance of a pure devotee and accepts him as the spiritual master. In the next stage, under the guidance of the spiritual master, the devotee executes regulative dev devotional service and as a result of uh, such activities, he becomes freed from all unwanted occupations. When he is freed from all unwanted occupation, his, first, uh, his faith becomes steadily fixed and he develops a transcendental taste for devotional service, then attachment, then ecstasy, and in the last stage, there is pure love of Godhead. These are the different stages of development of pure love. All right, do you know this, what's being described here? Have you heard this before? The different stages of developing pure love? Anyway, let's take it bit by bit and we'll come back to it. We're going to hear first of all, we, heard, we, we read anyway from that first paragraph about lust or love. And Prabhupada said there's no real love in the material world, but there is lust. 
And there's that lust, and they're compared in the Chaitanya Charitamrita here. All right? Atmendriya priti vancha tarabali kama. Krishnandriya priti icha dari prema nama. <coughs> the desire to gratify one's own senses is kama, lust. But the desire to please the senses of the Lord is prema, love. Right? Can you give some example? Who's, who's got prema? In the, we have in Krishna Leela, we see di different devotees, they love Krishna, right? There's Kubja. Has Kubja got Prema? Hare Krishna, are you there? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Have you all heard the Kubja? You know who Kubja is, right? Yeah. So did Kubja have Prema or, or Kama? Never heard of pure love. Gopis are pure love, right? Yes, mother. So there's a difference. The the love the love of the go the love of Kubja was like iron, but the love of the gopis was like gold. So kama and prema. Material world is karma, all lust. People want to satisfy their senses. But prema is to please the senses of Krishna. So the, the, the gopis, their only desire was to please, to please Krishna. They didn't think about their own sense gratification. So that's the first point. And then we read that second, we read about uh, the process of devotional service and how it actually begins, right? Right, so it begins with Shraddha, right? You have to, in the beginning one has to have some faith. Actually, even before faith, although it shows here faith, even before faith, what do you need to get faith? Where do you get the faith from? Science. Huh? Maybe. Association with pure devotee. Yes, I think you need to get. You need. You get. If you get the association with pure devotees, it can give you. It can give you some shraddha. So adal shraddha. You have to, you have some faith. It brings us to the temple, or it brings us to the devotee to the program, and you take an interest in devotion, devotional service. You have a little faith. Somebody shows you the beads. They tell you how to chant, and you start chanting. You do it. And somebody tells you, you have to read this book, and you get a book, and you start reading it, Bhagavad Gita or something. So, Adao Shraddha. And then, Tata ta, ta, Sadhu Sango. Sadhu Sango, association with devotees. You have a little faith, and you come and you start to associate with devotees, and from the, devo in the, the association of devotees, they will give you bhajana kriya. So adau shraddha tata sadhu sangha ta bhajana kriya. Bhajana kriya means to do the different devotional activities. Follow the four regulative principles, chant 16 rounds, wake up early in the morning, do mango arti or go to mango arti, 
and worship Tulsi and hear the Srimad Bhagavatam, all of this, this is bhajana kriya. And when, you, when you're doing bhajana kriya, at some point you will get initiation. This is when you get initiation, when you're at the stage of bhajana kriya. You're doing good practice. And then from bhajana kriya next comes tato narta nevriti shyat. Nar arta nevriti. Arta nevriti means destroying the things you don't want. Taton, taton narta nevriti shyat. An arta. Anartha nevriti. Eh? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, it's. Anartha nevriti. Anartha nevriti. Apostrophe there. Arta nevriti. No, we don't want to do that. Arta is what we want. Arta which is no, things. No, anartha nevriti. I, I know, I know, but I'm saying there's another word, arta. Arta is the things we want, the things which have value. But this is an arta nevriti. Tatun an arta nevriti shat. But you, you say, tatun arta nevriti shat. So an arta, an arta nevriti. An arta is things which are not good. With things in the heart which are no good. The lust, the anger, the greed, the envy, the illusion, the madness, these things, we have to get rid of them from the heart. That is called anartha nevriti, destroying the unwanted things in the heart. And when you get through, when you do that, then you come next stages, nishta. Nishta means very fixed. You're very fixed in Krishna conscious, you're very steady, you're going to chant every day, you're going to go to class, you're going to go to see the deity, you will only eat prasadam, you won't eat anything not offered to Krishna, nishta. And ru ruchi, ruchi means taste. You've got, you develop a taste that you enjoy. You want to hear, oh, the kirtan was so nice, oh, the deity is so beautiful. You feel so nice in the temple, it's so good to be with the temple and the temple with the devotee, that is ruchi. And then, asakti, as, atasakti, asakti, asakti means not, not attached to anything material detached from the material. And then tato bhavas. Bhava means the ecstasy. We've been talking about that this morning, how to come to bhava. Remember we spoke about the nine symptoms for bhava. You're attached to living in the holy dham. You have a taste for chanting the holy name. You're intoxicated to speak about Krishna. And you, you depend on Krishna to help you to come to perfection. You're, you feel very fallen, but you depend on Krishna to help you. And you're, you're humble and you don't waste any time. These kind of things. Nine symptoms, right? And that's bhava. And bhava leads to prema. Tata prem abhyu danchati. Sadakaman ayam premna pradur bhave bhavet krama. This is a verse from Shraddha to Prema. This is also important to know. We'll often come across this, this verse with the different things. In the beginning, there must be faith. Then one becomes interested to associate with pure devotees. Thereafter, one is initiated by the spiritual master and executes the regulative principles under his order. So that is at the stage of bhajan akriya. Then one is freed from all unwanted habits. This is Anna Arta Navriti. 
and becomes firmly fixed in devotional service, nishta. Thereafter, one develops taste, ruchi, and attachment, attachment to the spiritual, attachment to devotional service, asaktis. Not attached to the material, you're just attached to the spiritual. This is the way of sadhana bhakti, the execution of devotional service according to regulated principles. Gradually, emotions intensify, and finally, there is an awakening of love. This is the gradual development of love of Godhead for the devotee interested in Krishna consciousness. <clears throat> By devotional service only is one elevated to the transcendental planet, Goloka Vrindavan. And there also, there is only devotional service. For the activities of devotional service, both in this world and in the spiritual world, are one and the same. Devotional service does not change. The example of a mango can be given here. If one gets an unripe mango, it is still a mango. But when it is ripe, it remains the same mango, but it has become more tasteful and relishable. Similarly, there is devotional service performed according to the direction of the spiritual master and the injunction and regulated principles of Shastra. And there is devotional service in the spiritual world, rendered directly in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But they are both the same. There is no change. The difference is that one stage is unripe and the other is ripe and more relishable. Srimad Bhagavatam, 4th Canto, ninth chapter, text 21 or 11, purport. Okay, so here you can see the stages. You see the mango, the green mango, bitter mango at the bottom, and gradually the mango be starts become a little ripe. It's becoming, it's a mixture, sweet and sour. And then gradually it becomes very ripe and very sweet. Okay, so these are the, the stages of the mango. And the same way, we have the, the green mango is like where we come out from animal life and we come into the association of devotees. So we begin our Krishna consciousness we begin by surrendering to Krishna and then you go on to do sadhana bhakti, maybe vaidhi bhakti, may go on even to raganuga bhakti. You do the practice of devotional service and by practicing devotional service then you come to bhava bhakti or devotional service in ecstasy. And from bhava bhakti you can go on to prema bhakti, or pure love of God. That's like the fully ripened mango. So you would want to come to the stage of the ripe mango. Right? So three stages of devotional service, practice, and then ecstasy, then love of God. Here you can see. On the right side, we put in the different levels of devotion. On the bottom, Shraddha, or faith. And then Sadhu Sangha, association with the devotees. Then Bhajana Kriya, where we're performing devotional service according to the rules and regulations. Then Anartha Nivriti, the removal of the dirty things of the heart 
and then nishta become fixed, ruchi develop taste, asakti attachment, bhava bhakti ecstasy, and prema bhakti love of God. So these different stages are all compared to the mango, right? The green mango, the half ripe mango, and then the fully ripe mango. Right? From Shraddha to Prema. By serving the feet of the spiritual master, one is enabled to develop transcendental ecstasy in the service of the Personality of Godhead, who is the unchangeable enemy of the Madhu demon and whose service vanquishes one's material distresses. From the purport, the association of a bona fide spiritual master, like the great sage Maitreya, can be of absolute help in achieving transcendental attachment for the direct service of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam, 3rd Canto, Chapter 7, Text 19. So this verse is spoken about Vidura. He, he had initially approached Uddhava and then Uddhava told him, you should go to Maitreya because Vidura was an old man and Uddhava was a young man and Uddhava thought it's not proper that he should become the guru for an old man. So he said, you go to Maitreya who is your age and he can guide you because Maitreya also had been given instruction directly from Krishna. So he said, you go and hear from Maitreya. So mentioned here, to get the association of a great sage like Maitreya, it helps so much to get the attachment for the service of Krishna. Right? So serving the spiritual master. then we're enabled to develop ecstasy in the service of the Personality of Godhead. We can develop that bhava. And by serving the Personality of Godhead, then we get free of all material distress. All right, so what did we do today? We showed an overview of the stages of bhava and prema bhakti. How do we get to how how do we get to bhava? Who remembers? How do we come to bhava? By mercy or by. Uh... Acting, I don't know the word now. <laughs> by glance, by speech, and uh, by good wishes. Just okay. mercy. Okay, one was by mercy and the other was by practice. Practice. Right. And practice, I've mentioned it, I mean practice by the glancing and by the good wishes by words. And how do we come from bhava to prema? By mercy, only by mercy. Yeah, by mercy. So we, we, and we saw the progression from shraddha to prema bhakti. Shraddha to prema. Shraddha meaning faith, all the way up to prema. All right, so here's the concluding quote. The example is given that on the full moon there are many spots which may appear to be pockmarks. Still, the illumination spread by the full moon cannot be checked. 
Similarly, a little fault in the midst of volumes of devotional service is not at all to be counted as a fault. Attachment for Krishna is transcendental bliss. Amid unlimited volumes of transcendental bliss, a spot of some material defect cannot act in any way. Chapter 18, last paragraph. So Srila Prabhupada is describing to us that there may be some fault there in the devotional service, but if there's attachment for Krishna, that is the main thing. The devotional service, it may not be perfect, there may be some faults, but if one is strongly attached to Krishna, then there's no fault. Amid, amid unlimited volumes, a little material defect cannot act in any way. So you may have some fault, but if you're attached to Krishna, that's the most important thing. And that will take you back home, back to Godhead. All right, are there any questions? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, regarding, regarding this past time of Naraturi, and you beautifully mentioned Maharaj that how he was, uh, he was qualified candidate to receive the mercy of this Bhakti Vedantas because he was, he was very serious. He was not inter taking interest in games and all these things. So Maharaj, uh, this, uh, this caused kind of debate, you can say, uh, uh, among some of us, some of the devotees. Because we see that now in our schools, especially in Mayapur, we have a Smith International School, and even Gurukul also, I think, uh, the sports is being uh, encouraged, Maharaj. Because nowadays, uh, children are very, maybe, they are very, what do you call, uh, very active, whatever you can say. Because, because of that, the in, uh, games are being encouraged, I think. So, Maharaj, uh, what is the view? With, with what view it is being encouraged? Well, with caution, you say it's not every child who will like these things. Mm -hmm. Different children have different natures. So some, okay. some children, they have that nature, they want that physical enjoyment, you know, they like this, com you know, competitive thing, you know, they want to compete, they want to be the best and do these kind of, you know, they look for that kind of thing. Not every child, however, has that kind of nature. And there are other children who will be much more Brahminical and who are inclined to Brahminical culture. And they will be more inclined to study and to read and, and they do more, they'll do more like cleaning work and they'll be engaged in practical service. Some other children, you know, they, they're a different nature. They just want to, they enjoy playing around and like that. What can we say? <laughs> That's children's nature. Oh, yeah. Some children, not every child. Of course, you can see now, you know, you go there. I went, even if you go to the uh, traditional Guru Kula, I saw now they put up uh, some goal posts and they have like a foot, like a, a, a football field there for the children in the traditional Gurukula, you know. So it, it's not quite the mood, you know, that in which they originally started the Gurukula. Oh. You know, it, it seems this is a, and you know, a few years back it was more they were doing martial arts. They had, you know, they had the devote, they had the teacher come from Australia even, and he was teaching them out how to do kung fu and martial arts. Well, okay, you know, that's something cultural, you know, but uh, because the point is, not everybody's a brahmana. 
Yes, Marcus. That's a real thing. You know, and we have, you know, that Guru called some of the boys who were there then, they were more Kshatriya like, you know, because uh, they were really big and they had these big, powerful bodies, you know, they're really <laughs> big and strong guys, you know, and for them, to be brahmanas, it's just a little difficult, you know, it's just not quite their nature. People have different bodies. Somebody has a body which is really brahminical and somebody else is more the kshatriya nature, you know. The kshatriyas, they have that, you know, they, they have that nature, just to, they're powerful and they're brave and, they, you know, and they're heroic and, you know, they're not afraid of anything like that, you know, this, this is a Kshatriya. And Brahmanas are not quite like that. Brahmanas are learned and gentle. <laughs> you know, Kshatriyas are not really gentle people, you know. So we have to understand there's different kinds. Of, and you've got other people who are more Vaishya inclined. You know, they go to the Gurukula, but they're more Vaishya nature. It's okay, you know, Krishna consciousness is for everyone. So we have to recognize every individual's nature and we have to engage them according to their propensities. And so some people's nature is just to do business. It's just so natural for them to do some kind of business, you know, and to uh, arrange some, you know, buying and selling things and that. But and Maharaj, uh, at the same time, keep them connected in the Krishna consciousness, right? Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, we give them Krishna consciousness as well. Even though they're, you know, Kshatriya or Vaishya, they still get the Brahman initiation, you know, the higher, they're the higher castes. So they're still initiated into Krishna consciousness. And they're, even in, in the very culture, they were given the sacred thread. Yeah. Yes, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, thank you. Good point you brought up. Interesting point, yeah. All right, any other questions? Okay, tomorrow we're going to have like an overview of what we covered so far. So you may like to look over things. If you have any questions, we could deal with them tomorrow. Yeah? And tomorrow we'll have that... Uh... Yes, right. We want to see the drama. You present that, uh, you know, somebody going to do Raganuga Bhakti, somebody wants to go into Raganuga Bhakti and he's talking with a devotee. And uh, Shobha Mai Keshava Mataji, are you okay? Have you prepared something with uh, Shanja Mataji? She left. She just uh, wrote a message and she left. She had some urgent work. Oh, okay. So I hope she has something anyway. But uh, anyway, uh, Shashikant Prabhu and Sudarshan Prabhu will do something, yeah? Yes. Right. Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Okay, we'll look forward to that. Okay, Prabhu, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yes. Go back to Vrinda Ki. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare.